Welcome to the Corey Lee Show, where our focus is on building leaders and transforming culture. My name is Corey Lee, and in each episode, I aspire to ignite something on the inside of you that encourages you to grow yourself and to make an impact on the world around you. Welcome to the Corey Lee Show. Welcome back to the Corey Lee Show, y'all. Today is going to be a an exciting episode. I'm excited about our conversation. I believe it's going to be good. I got one of my really good friends joining us for today. And I, I just know, um, I, I, I truly believe you're going to be blessed by the conversation that we're going to have. I don't know what's going to come out of the conversation, but I believe it's going to be good. And I believe that you're going to be blessed and uplifted. And, and so I've got my friend, Brandon Johnson with me today. And Brandon, welcome to the Corey Lee Show, man. Man, thanks so much. I really appreciate you uh, having me on. I'm, I'm honored. I uh, listen to most all your podcasts, and man, I love the show. I'm a huge fan. Awesome. Well, man, I appreciate you coming on. And just to kind of give a, a little bit of an intro to Brandon. Brandon, like myself, started out in the medical field and uh, did that for a time, but now he is an entrepreneur. And uh, I, when we first met, I found it super interesting what he does. He has his he has an online store. He can I'm sure he'll tell more about that. Amazon and eBay and um, just a, an awesome business. It's not just a hobby that he is doing. He has built a business that is providing work for people. He's providing a service to a community. And I just find it uh, incredible the systems and processes that he's had in place. And so a great great businessman. Great father and a great, uh, great man in the community as well. And and I'm sure we're going to dive into some faith whenever you and I get together. We talk about Jesus. So there's going to be definitely probably right. going to be some of that in there. But um, Brandon, that's kind of what you do now. Take us a little bit on the journey. How did you get to where you are today? Um, well, it, it started uh, my love for, for what I do started when I was about 18 years old. I was a uh, in college at Mississippi State, and uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, I wasn't going to school like I was supposed <laughs> to be. Uh, I flunked. I flunked out of college twice um, because, well, number one, I wasn't doing what God wanted me to do. That was, I think, that was the first thing. But um, I developed a love uh, for just finding things and you know being able to to profit off of them. I started out just selling baseball cards on eBay when like eBay was almost brand new. And then I'm like, you know, this is, this is really neat. I can make some money off of this. And just the whole process really, I was just really drawn to it. And uh, I just got excited about it. And then it just kind of hit me that, you know, the internet was fairly new around here, you know? Um, and I'm like, you know, there's, there's possibilities here. So I started out just, Sourcing things on stores and in different places, and and I, that was just for extra money for then. And then uh, ultimately, um, I did, uh, you know, God got me got me through the storm. I really didn't know Him yet, but He provided uh, a way out of a lot of problems that I was having. Some things I was going through while I was in college, and uh, I just wasn't in I wasn't in the right place uh, where He wanted me to be, and. It took my beautiful wife to kind of draw me out of that. I met Calissa when I was at MEW and, and uh, you know, I just fell in love with her. And um, really, she was just, um, she was that rock and that person I needed to help kind of pull me out of some things that I was drawn into. That, uh, she's in a bad place, to be honest with you. And and um, ultimately, you know, we got, we got married. I've got two beautiful children now, 13-year-old son, 10-year-old daughter, and and um, I didn't know what I wanted to do in life. I didn't, at 18, I had no idea, um, and I was, I let other people that had good intentions for me kind of tell me what they thought I should be doing, mm. and I want to caution anybody that's listening to this, that's that's not what it's about. It's about what God's purpose for you is and what his intentions for you are. Seek that out. And, and that was that was my first mistake, number one. Um, but then ultimately I said, God, what do you want me to do? And you know, he provided a way for me to 
even though I had a GPA of, uh, I think at the time the GPA might have been like 0. 0.6. <laughs> really? You can measure you're, on like, your scale. you're like, I, we were just talking about my 18 year old dog, Corey. I'm like, I'm thinking my 18 year old dog might could get a, a 0. 0.6 GPA. I don't know. But um, I'm like, I'm never going to get into a college. Nobody's ever going to want me. And, you know, I just kind of started, well, God, what, what kind of, what avenue can I go in? What can I do? What, you know, what do you want me to do? And ultimately, uh, I found a way through ICC. You know, they didn't take a GPA. They had a point system that who could get into nursing. And I went and uh, there was a lady there named Janice Howell. I met with one day and I said, you know, I really would like to be a nurse here and go to school. I shared my story with her. And uh, we had a, uh, one of those, it was a, it was one of those uh, God appointed just meetings when I met with that lady. We sat there and I cried in front of her and I shared my heart with her. And she said, you know what, I'm going to help you get in. And she did. God put her right there at that point in my life where he knew I was broken and I was really searching. And, and she was there. And so ultimately went through nursing, uh, got a degree in that started working in the surgical intensive care in Chupalo, Mississippi. I enjoyed that. I loved helping people. I still love helping people. It's a big, that's a big part of my heart is uh, helping people. But um, I saw to it then that I wasn't going to be able to be the father that I wanted to be. And I wasn't going to be able to be the man of God that I thought that God wanted me to be. I was missing Christmases, birthdays. I wasn't getting to go with my family to church. My wife is getting our ba our young children and a baby ready for church by herself, taking these children to church alone. And I'm like, God, I need to be part of that. And I said, I, 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 help me find a way. And so he brought into me those, those tools that he had already instilled in me and that desire that he had given me and the love for, for selling things. And he said, all right, here you go. Here's, here's that way out. And, he, and, and ultimately I just uh, took a step, a step of faith. And uh, my wife allowed me to take a step of faith. And uh, kind of the story was, I was still nursing, went through a a year. I said, you know, we're going to see how, what I can do and doing this part-time and, and also full-time nursing and on e some things on eBay. And it was the hardest year of my life, ultimately. Uh, didn't sleep a lot. Wasn't a good daddy. I wasn't a good husband, really. But as I knew, this was, this is it. This is my this is that do or die moment in my life. And, and I've got to take this opportunity. And ultimately after that year, you know, I had made a lot more money doing that than I had as a nurse and God just, he just blessed it. Yeah, man. There's, uh, as I'm listening to your story, uh, I had a mentor say one time, he said, Corey, it does you no good to be in the right place at the right time. If you lack the awareness that you're even there in, in your whole story, you recognize the opportunity you talked about when you met your wife, you talked about the lady that got you into the, uh, the nursing program and these opportunities came, but you recognize those opportunities, but you also recognize who they were from. I think that's really, really powerful. I want to go back. Um, you mentioned you were in a bad way, like, um, in college and you were doing some stuff in when you were caught up in that, did you recognize it was bad in the in the moment, or like what what was um or was it something later on that shifted? Like, oh, I shouldn't be doing that. Like, did you know it in the moment? Yeah, I'm thinking I'm not, I knew in the moment when I was I didn't know how to experience number one failure mm. as a, a teenager. I was uh, you know, I was fairly smart, I guess, when it came to school. But you know, I was going to a school that didn't have a lot of the advanced classes. And then, so I let people talk me into going into biological engineering, which I had, I could care less how anything works. I can't fix anything, man. I don't know how to do anything. Okay. That is the one thing that I should not even been touching yeah. at all. And these people are like, you know, this is good. You can go do this or that. And ultimately I went to a four-year university by myself. I had no friends that went with me. So ultimately I went into a time, number one, I wasn't with God then. I was, I was just alone. And I was looking for anything and everything that could make me kind of feel good hmm. and make me feel better about myself because I didn't do well. And I'm like, I don't like this. 
-hmm. And then, so I went through it and I was really trying for a while at school, but then I just kind of, I kind of gave up. Mm -hmm. I said, you know, I just can't do this. It's not me. I don't like it. Why am I doing this? But then I was ashamed to tell people and to share with people that love me. I mean, yeah, my, they people would ultimately would have been disappointed for a short season. Because if I had just shared my heart, you know, weren't you in school? You you weren't going to school, but everybody thought you were going to school, right? Oh yeah, man, living a total lie. It was it's crazy. You think you want to watch some stuff on on TV today? You want to watch a Netflix series? I had you one, okay? <laughs> I could I could maybe make one of those. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was to the point to where I had lived this lie where I'm telling people, I mean, I had made, I had made fake like report cards. Wow. I mean, ultimately just living the biggest, living a full life of lies. You know, I didn't know Jesus then, but I'm portraying to know Christ. I'm, I'm in church. People think that I'm follower of Jesus. I'm not. Mm -hmm. You know, I have every part in facet of my life is a lie, almost. You know, and and I just uh, I got really depressed, mm -hmm. and it was just like you know, I don't, I just can't tell people. And then I just began to feel the shame. I began just to feel worthless. I can remember one night laying in bed thinking, you know, they would be better off without me. Mm -hmm. I don't have much worth. And, you know, and then, you know, I went, I got addicted to gambling and man, I got in a lot of trouble financially that I wasn't sharing with people, credit card debt, not paying. I mean, when I got out of all this and I finally, I had a credit score of 400. Hmm. I, I mean, it was, I was just in a bad way, stole money from my parents to gamble when I got, they thought I was doing tuition. I mean, man, it, it was just out of control and I, real, and I, and I did realize it, but I'm like, I just couldn't make that confession mm -hmm. to those that love me. I just couldn't take that step to say, you know, I just need to get this off my chest. I need to come clean. And man, it, it, it was, it was a really hard time in my life. It was, it was bad. Brent, let me, let me ask you something like, uh, so, so you're going to school and uh, you're not doing good. You said something I thought was really powerful. I did not know how to fail, man. That, that is a powerful thing. Maybe we can jump into that here in a second. Uh, but, but, you had never experienced failure and you're not doing uh, up to your standard. You're not doing good. And it kind of starts to spiral out of control to where uh, now you're making up lies. You may <laughs> making up your own report cards. Uh, you're stealing from mom and them to gamble. And uh, probably you mentioned ashamed, uh, feel a little bit worthless. Uh, probably, I guess, thinking as, as well, like I can get myself, I don't know why that thumbs down went, uh, I can get myself out of this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I give that a thumbs down too. That was all bad. You're right. Yeah, I, bad stuff. Listening on podcast, the uh, <laughs> the picture <laughs> form just did a thumbs down somehow. I don't know how that happened. <laughs> anyway, um, I want to know like what shifted, what happened? Like was there, what, what moment did you finally get to the point, man, I got to get this off my chest? Or did a some kind of situation happen that forced you out of it? Oh, it was a force. Okay. Yeah. So what, what I lived the lie. I lived the lie as long as I can. I could. I think I finally come clean about two weeks before people thought I was going to graduate. Mm. People thought I was going to have an actual, uh, I think at that time, a business degree. Man, I had just, I had, I was at the end of the road. So then I had to come clean with everyone that loved me. I mean, can you imagine lying to everybody in your life? Mm -hmm. My grandparents, my parents, my my soon, my uh, wife that I'm engaged. I'm engaged to Calissa now. Uh, her parents, people at church. I mean, you name it, man. Wow. I was living just, you know, we talk about, I mean, I mean, Satan is the father of lies, but I think I was coming in second, okay? It was horrible. <laughs> I was coming in second, okay? It was bad. Yeah. And then, you know, it was just, man, I came playing with everybody, and, you know, that was a, that was a bad experience. But uh, it, it's a, it was an experience that I learned a lot from. Yeah. You know, I learned, man, I should never, I should never lie to people. I mean, I should always be truthful. You know, I should always, I could have relationships with people and be able to come to them and say, you know, I'm sorry. You know, I lied about this. You know, I got this going on. 
I've been living, I've been living this front in my life. I don't have it together. I'm not doing so well. Yeah. And I need some help. Yeah. There, and, there's uh, power in that, man. There's power in that vulnerability and that confession. I want to ask you real quick in that, uh, how did the people who truly love you, your mom and them, you, you know, you, you were engaged at the time. How did they respond? And then I want to know, once you let it out, what did you feel on the inside? Um, so uh, just coming, you know, telling Calissa and my parents um, first, you know, they were, I mean, can you, you can imagine the disappointment um, that they were feeling, the betrayal. Um, you know, I just can't imagine how I feel if my children did that to me, mm-hmm. you know, you know, and um, and her parents and, and, and I was I was treated with love, you know, and um, and that's where I was going. And, I'm, I'm uh, sorry to cut you off. I really was. But, but they were disappointed, but they didn't abandon you, right? Because mm. you and your wife, you still married. You still yeah, married. Man, and she, uh, mm. I, I think, I, and, and the reason I'm kind of touching on that, and I know we, we didn't talk about where we were going to go with this, but there's power in that. And a lot of times, I, I know myself, right? We've all been there, kind of what you're talking about. Uh, you've done some things and you try to cover it up man, what are people going to do? How are people going to respond? Mm-hmm. And you allow that just to keep stuffing it on the inside of you. You allow that to keep pushing it down. And yeah, there, there is disappointment, but they did not abandon you, right? They, no, they, no. they, they kind of kept going. And as you were talking, this verse of scripture came to my mind. It's James 5. It says, confess your faults to one another and pray for one another so that you may be healed. And yeah. that healing is like a, a, a deep inner work. It's a deep, deep inner work. Um, I, I had, uh, I don't want to take away from my, our conversation, but as you're telling this, it reminded me of, I had done some things that, um, you know, obviously sinned and tried to cover those up and I'd confessed to the Lord and I, and I was praying one day and this sin was, was passed, but I was praying one day and I felt like the Lord said, you got to humble yourself. And I knew exactly what that meant. That meant confess it to mm-hmm. my wife. And it's like, no, no, Lord, come on, no, anything but that, anything but that. And I was like, can't you just, can't you just wave your magic wand and forget about it? And he said, this is what he said, Brendan. He said, oh, I have, but you haven't. And, and what he means is there was something in my heart that was still hanging on to it. And so I, I'm telling you, it's a powerful thing. The minute I confessed it, that thing inside of me was released. And so, so when I heard your story, when you're telling that, the people who loved you, yes, it hurt them. Yes, there was probably time to heal that, but they did not abandon you. And so what about for you? Like, what, what was that for you once you confessed it and you kind of get got away from, you know, the shame and all of it? How how did it affect you? Yeah, well, ultimately it was, it was just really, you know, people showing me the love of Jesus. Mm. I mean, really, because he's, you know, he's the one that's forgiven us for everything. Yeah. And, you know, and, uh, you know, that, and then I had that feeling of, it's like, okay, man, I can breathe now. You know, I have been just stuffing and stuffing and stuffing all this bad stuff into my life. And now, you know, I can, I can get rid of all that. I'm clean. And, uh, you know, it's kind of not really a fresh start, but it is a, it is a time to where, you know, okay, I'm in the, I'm in the valley, but now I feel like I can finally start trekking back up. Mm-hmm. Okay, I can start making my way back. And, um, you know, ultimately, you know, uh, it, you know, my, my parents, of course, you know, you think your parents are the ones that won't, you know, let you down or leave you. But ultimately, my, my wife, she could have left so easily for me. Mm-hmm. You know, she just said this whole, I mean, almost our whole relationship had been a lie. I had lied the whole time. And she could have been like, man, this guy's worthless. Mm. He's nothing but a liar. There's no truth in him. Why would I want him to be my husband? Mm. And man, she, she, she stuck with me. Mm. You know, she was faithful. And, you know, I think that was just, you know, it was just a testament to me of watching her life of how faithful God is. Yeah. He yeah. says, he says, man, Brandon, you are rotten. Mm-hmm. But you know what? I love you. Mm. And that's really how people treated me. Wow. And then, you know, it was, it just allowed me to, 
to say, okay, I, I got to, I've got to start living for Christ. Um, you know, ultimately I didn't, um, accept Christ as my savior until, um, around 12 years, 12 years ago. So I still had some, some things to, to work out and, uh, and start, stop relying on myself yeah. and start relying on him. Man, that's good. And, and what I hear, and so we're going to bring it up a little bit. Uh, I, I love your story right there because it's a story of what you, you said, love and redemption. And you've been redeemed, man. And uh, even from, from your spirit side, for sure. But even, even in what you're capable of now, because you've, you've got a business that's making an impact on the community. How many team members you got on your team? Uh, Ten. Got ten people on your team. You built a business where you you've employed ten team members. Uh, you're not going to say this, but you also you give to all kinds of charity. You donate. You're doing a lot of good in the community. From a financial perspective, you're doing really well. Thinking about where you came from, and so one of the yeah. things that I, I really wanted to dive into in our conversation as well is if you're buying and selling on eBay. Yeah, uh, and and baseball cars that was something that you were doing as well you can spot an opportunity right, right. and so, so you're yeah. good at sourcing opportunities i would just love to hear from your perspective like how do you how do you know what is a good deal how do you know what opportunity to pursue like do you have a process or system or like how did you get good at that um you kind of just well i started um you know, I was taking in that content we would like to talk about. I found people that knew what they were talking about. And I mm -hmm. felt like I could, I could learn from back then. And I was just, you know, I can remember consuming, especially when I started learning Amazon, which is a much bigger process than just selling something on eBay. I can remember, you know, I'm listening to at least two to three hours a day on YouTube of people telling, you know, what to do, what not to do. And, and then ultimately the, when you're looking for the opportunity you know, after you've done it for long enough, I used to, you know, could go through the clearance aisle at Walmart and you can, uh, you know, you can ultimately download like the eBay app right now. You There's a barcode scanner on there. You can walk up to that item that you see on clearance on Walmart. You can scan it and then you can go to completed items and you can see what those things are selling for. And that gives you an idea of, hey, can I make money on that? And, uh, but ultimately just doing it for so long, I can go down that aisle and I can tell you mm. when I see those prices, I don't, I don't go down through there scanning everything. Mm. I'm just like, I can, I can just pick them out. I just, it really just become part of, of who I am, I guess. I guess it's just something that God um, gave to me. But now when I'm looking at these bigger items now, I used to just would buy, you know, one or two or something, but now it may be a couple of hundred or something. It may be a couple of thousand or something. Uh, so before I get deep in something, you know, there's different softwares I have that look at past sales histories and uh, how fast things are selling, the prices they're selling and averages over the last year or two. And and it becomes, um, you know, I talked about gambling, um, how that was a part of my life. And, I, and the thing I do now, I tell people it is still gambling, but it's educated. Mm -hmm. It's an educated gamble. It's it is a, something that is studied and is not really left up to chance, but uh, but you know it ultimately is is still um, there's no guarantee. So there there is still a faith component into it that when when I'm when I'm purchasing these things, you know ultimately it's going to do well. Yeah, I, curious. So so you started out kind of like. Um, <clears throat> almost like a hobby, baseball cards. Mm -hmm. Then you saw, man, I've got to find a way to spend more time with my family. I've got to be more present. And so you saw an opportunity with the Amazon and eBay and, and those kind of things. And it started out as a side gig. What shifted it to, man, this is a legit business. Was, was there a moment there or something that happened? Well, it started out, like I said, I'm just trying to, was just the the need to know I had to supplement my nursing income, mm -hmm. you know, it was never, it was never really meant in my mind. It was never meant to be more than me. Yeah. Okay. I had a 1200, we built this 1200 square foot shop. I'm just going to go out here and work every day and I'm going to do what I do. And I enjoyed it. And I was fine with that. But after, um, after I got on Amazon, um, I really didn't know what to expect. I guess my first black Friday, 
I'll by myself. Um, I shipped, I shipped for either 20 or 22 hours straight Whoa. by myself. Wow. And then the whole area was just out of control. And then finally that January, I'm like, you know, I need somebody to help me. I, I'm like, this is just, this is more than I can handle. And it wasn't really even a thought of, hey, I just, I want to grow. It's more of a thought of, I'm kind of drowning. <laughs> you know, I need some help. I need some help. And uh, so ultimately, uh, my uh, current warehouse manager, Mark, he came on and it was just meant for him to be to go through and help me straighten up the mess I made, kind of help me re inventory the stuff that I had. And then we kind of, he and I got Amazon together. And then it's like, you know, we were finding you know, these things, we're sourcing, and, and uh, you know, we need more help because we've got like, shipments out, we're doing things. and really on a smaller scale, but um, ultimately then I added a couple other people part-time and, you know, I've got, I told you I've got this square 100, 1200 square foot shop, but it's so full. I rented this other little um, place that's down the road from my house. It's about a thousand square feet. It's full of stuff. I've got stuff in storage units all over Amory. We're having to go in the mornings before we can ship and get stuff out of storage units. And, you know, just ultimately the need just kept going. And then ultimately I'm like, you know what? I need a warehouse. Mm -hmm. And so then we bought the warehouse in Smithville where we are now. And, uh, and then it just kept growing. Well, I need somebody to help with this. We need more help with that and this and that. And, and, uh, and God just kept, you know, it, it's hard to find good people to work in a small business. Mm -hmm. And I, especially when you don't, I don't offer insurance. So that's yeah. a big deal. People need insurance. But the people that work for me are so special. They're all, we all have needs, but these people have a, each one of them has either, I'm not saying that we're, we're an afflicted group of people, but they have special sicknesses or, or situations in their life. And I'm just like, there are things going. And I'm like, you know, God just brought these people in so that we can be together and help each other. So that was, I think that's really special about the group of people. Mm -hmm. um, for anybody who's listening that's more of an entrepreneur from an entrepreneur lens kind of what I heard in your story is that you kind of started small and it built from there and I, I I love doing that as an entrepreneur uh, I know there are other methods and means of of getting there but I like starting and building big uh, starting small and building big it allows you to kind of develop your systems and processes, allows you to refine some things without the huge, huge risk uh, that could be if you, if you, you know, kind of went the other way. But, but as I listened, there are a couple of, um, you didn't dive deep into it, but I can just imagine it started out as a side gig. You started in it and uh, you got to a point, man, I needed some help. And so to get to another level, you had to bring in good quality people. From there, you brought in more people, but but something that you you kind of eased over. You talked about some software that you had. Eventually, to get to another level for a for a um, as an entrepreneur, you got to have systems and processes that are in place. And many times, as entrepreneurs, sometimes we can get stuck by that lid of what happened, what worked in the past. Maybe trying to keep doing that same thing, but if you're going to get to that next level, you've got to. Sometimes you got to develop systems and processes and structures so that that you can uh, can do that. And so, Brandon, um, one last question I have for you. We'll see. I don't know how far this will go, but before we hopped on, you mentioned a verse of scripture that kind of goes along with opportunity, and um, I, I, I'd love for you to share that verse of scripture if you had uh, had a little bit of time. Yeah, um, it's Ephesians uh, chapter 5, verses uh, 15 through 20. Be very careful then how you live, not as wise, but not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understand what the Lord's will really is. Do not get drunk on wine, which can lead to debauchery. Instead, be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another with psalms, hymns, and songs from the Spirit. Sing and make music from your heart to the Lord, always giving thanks to God, the Father, for everything in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So, yeah, I wanted to just share about how important it is when you're given that opportunity that you seize it. You know, I, I ultimately, I was given an extra opportunity 
after all those things happened in my life. These people forgave me, uh, kind of gave me a fresh slate. And it was up to me. So like I said, I started that heal, but it's up to me to make that progress now. Th those people are looking to me to kind of make right what was wrong. And ultimately, you, I could have given up. But, uh, you know, I just, uh, I didn't like, um, I still know what that feeling of that failure feels like, Corey. Mm -hmm. I didn't let that leave me. Mm. I said, I will never, I don't ever want to feel that again. Mm -hmm. I don't want to feel that again. So, you know, I go through seasons where I am, um, I think I've talked to you about this, uh, complacency is a problem of mine sometimes. Mm -hmm. And we become complacent. We're not seizing those opportunities. Okay. We're, we're, we're just kind of sitting back and on the sidelines and saying, things are going well. I'm just going to let good enough be good enough. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and, uh, but then that next line says, understand what the Lord's will is. He doesn't, he didn't, he didn't create me to sit on the sideline for him in my walk in business, in my walk with Christ. And as a husband, as a father, he didn't say, well, you've done pretty good this week. Why don't you go sit over there next week and sit down and chill out? No, man, we can't, we can't do that. And uh, when it talks about getting drunk on wine, they really are talking about wine, but I also want to apply that to just the things that we let get in the way. You know, if you're drunk on wine, that's going to get in the way of your progress. Yeah. Well, these, these other distractions in your life are getting in the way of your process. What distractions are going on in your business that are getting in the way of your processes and the success? And what really are your goals? Because so many times when I'm not hitting those goals, when I've got problems, it's because I've given in to the distraction. I'm not focused. I, I, my eyes are not on the prize, okay? And in my spiritual life, my heart posture is not toward God. It's got to be there toward him. Where's your heart posture? Mm -hmm. Are you focused on him? Or are you distracted? But be filled with the spirit. Thank God for the Holy Spirit. Because he's the one that tells me, hey, you better stop looking left. You better stop looking right. You better start looking straight at him. Mm -hmm. And that's when that's when you can be like, you know, you're re-energized. That's when you see, oh, hey, he was there the whole time. I just wouldn't look in the right way. Those opportunities are there in your life. They're there in your business. They're there with the things that God's planned for you. Just stop being distracted. Stop being too busy. And then when you have reached that, that point at the end, you better be giving thanks to who thanks is due. Because it ain't you that did it. It's the one that created you that allowed you to do it. Mm. And when I realized that, life became different for me. Yeah. My business became different. My life with my family became different. Who I am as a child of God became different. Because I used to worry early in the business. I'm not going to find enough things to sell. I've got all these employees to support. I, I just can't do it. And then I became obsessed with some of those things and worry. And then I started taking time away from my family. But when I said, God, I'm going to quit worrying about it. Let you, let you handle it. Not be complacent. That's not what I'm talking about. Yeah. But when I had faith that he's going to provide, now I can just, he does. Yeah. He does. Man, that is such a, uh, a uh, like a weight off your shoulders feeling. And I, I can't tell how many people I've had conversations with this about. You will not find that in a book. Of, mm -hmm. of like just releasing because all these books, they talk about 10 X this and 10 X that you got to work hard, work hard, work hard. It's an interesting thing when you work by faith and it's not, it, and it's not being lazy. It's not being complacent. It's being faithful. And uh, man, there's, there's such a, um, a pressure to perform a striving that is just let go of whenever you, you walk by faith. And I, I thought that was powerful. Something you said that I don't want to blow by. You said, I never let that feeling of failure go by. And I never want that feeling again. Uh, I, I, I've said this on the podcast before, but I was reading a book by uh, Don Yeager and he got the opportunity to interview the greatest athletes of all time. You know, you're talking about Peyton Manning, Kobe Bryant, Michael Jordan, all that. 
And he would ask the best of the best the same question. And he would ask them, uh, what separates the greatest of all time from the good? And you think about that. The good athletes, I mean, these are still, you know, professional athletes. They're still in the top 1%. But the greats. And he said, without fail, they all answered the question the same exact way, maybe in their own different words, but the essence was the same. He said, they hated to lose more than they loved to win. And that's kind of what, you, kind of what you're saying, because Kobe Bryant, he said it this way. He said, when you love to win, but you don't hate to lose, when you lose, it's like, well, we gave it the good old college try, right? We, we, did, we did good. We'll get them next time. And he said, but when you hate to lose, it eats at you. And it causes you to get better. It causes you to say, you know what? I What you just said, I never want that feeling again. I'm going to do whatever I got to do to get better. I'm going to do whatever it, whatever it looks like for you, for me to improve in that area, because I don't want that feeling again. Failure is not fatal. It's not. What I have found is whenever we fail, it shines light on opportunities for growth. And I can whine about it. I can complain about it. I can go climb up in my bed and choose not to ever get out again. Or I can say, you know what? Something, an area of growth has been highlighted to me. What am I going to do about it? And that's kind of what I heard you say. That's why it keeps improving you. So, man, I, I love that. I love everything you said, redeeming the time, how powerful that is, and making the most of every opportunity. I think, too, what I heard in your story, the importance of recognizing opportunity, but recognizing who opportunities come from recognizing the source of those opportunities mm. is a powerful thing as well. And I think that could be an episode for some other time. So <laughs> Brandon, dude, you have added a ton, exactly. a ton of value. Hey, if somebody's listening and they're like, man, I want, I, you know, there's something about the way Brandon talks or something. He carries something. I would love to connect with him. How do people connect with you? Uh, yeah. You can send me an email at Brandon at Monroe, that's M-O-N-R-O-E-D-E-P-O-T.com. Brandon at Monroe Depot.com. Uh, I'd love to connect with you because a whole other episode that I go with is the importance of those connections, um, you know, that we make together. So I'd love to connect with anybody, help you out if I can. Awesome. Brandon at MonroeDepot.com. And uh, hey, connect with Brandon. He's an awesome, awesome guy who, if you want people in your corner who's going to care about you, care about your success and want to see you succeed, hey, that's your dude right there. Brandon, he, he's your guy. Appreciate that, boy. Thank you. Yeah, Appreciate he that. definitely will. He, he's somebody who will elevate you. And so I've enjoyed getting to know him over the last several months. And I uh, definitely have added a ton of value today, Brandon. Thanks for coming on. And hey, for anybody who's listening that if Brandon said something that stood out to you, uh, make sure to comment. We'll pass that along to him or connect with him. Make sure you like and subscribe so you can stay up to date with any of the latest episodes of The Corey Lee Show. Appreciate you guys. Hope you all have a great day and God bless. Three, two, one. Okay. Thanks for joining me today. I hope I have added value to you. And if you have found value in this episode, let me know. Drop a comment and make sure you share with a friend or family member. See you next episode.